Anatomy of the Human Body, Part 4 by Henry Gray. The Midbrain. The Midbrain or Mesencephalon. The Midbrain or Mesencephalon is the short constricted portion which connects the pons and cerebellum with the thalamencephalon and cerebral hemispheres. It is directed upward and forward and consists of one, a ventrolateral portion composed of a pair of cylindrical bodies named the cerebral peduncles, two, a dorsal portion consisting of four rounded eminences named the corpora quadrigemina, and three, an intervening passage or tunnel, the cerebral aqueduct, which represents the original cavity of the midbrain and connects the third with the fourth ventricles. The cerebral peduncles, pedunculus cerebri, cruz cerebri, are two cylindrical masses situated at the base of the brain and largely hidden by the temporal lobes of the cerebrum, which must be drawn aside or removed in order to expose them. They emerge from the upper surface of the pons, one on either side of the middle line, and, divergent as they pass upward and forward, disappear into the substance of the cerebral hemispheres. The depressed area between the crura is termed the interpeduncular fossa and consists of a layer of grayish substance, the posterior perforated substance, which is pierced by small apertures for the transmission of blood vessels. Its lower part lies on the ventral aspect of the medial portions of the tegmenta and contains a nucleus named the interpeduncular ganglion. Its upper part assists in forming the floor of the third ventricle. The ventral surface of each peduncle is crossed from the medial to the lateral side by the superior cerebellar and posterior cerebral arteries. Its lateral surface is in relation to the gyrus hippocampi of the cerebral hemisphere and is crossed from behind forward by the trochlear nerve. Close to the point of disappearance of the peduncle into the cerebral hemisphere, the optic tract winds forward around its ventrolateral surface. The medial surface of the peduncle forms a lateral boundary of the interpeduncular fossa and is marked by a longitudinal furrow, the ocular motor sulcus, from which the roots of the ocular motor nerve emerge. On the lateral surface of each peduncle, there is a second longitudinal furrow, termed a lateral sulcus. The fibers of the lateral lemniscus come to the surface in this sulcus and pass backward and upward to disappear under the inferior colliculus. Structure of the Cerebral Peduncles on transverse section, each peduncle is seen to consist of a dorsal and a ventral part, separated by a deeply pigmented lamina of gray substance, termed the substantia nigra. The dorsal part is named the tegmentum, the ventral, the base, or crusta. The two bases are separated from each other, but the tegmenta are joined in the median plane by a forward prolongation of the raphae of the pons. Laterally, the tegmenta are free, dorsally, they blend with the corpora quadrigemina. The base, basis pedunculi, crusta or pes, is semilunar on transverse section and consists almost entirely of longitudinal bundles of efferin fibers, which arise from the cells of the cerebral cortex and are grouped into three principal sets, that is, cerebrospinal, frontopontine, and temporopontine. The cerebrospinal fibers, derived from the cells of the motor area of the cerebral cortex, occupy the middle three-fifths of the base. They are continued partly to the nuclei of the motor cranial nerves, but mainly into the pyramids of the medulla oblongata. The frontopontine fibers are situated in the medial fifth of the base. They arise from the cells of the frontal lobe and end in the nuclei of the pons. The temporopontine fibers are lateral to the cerebrospinal fibers. They originate in the temporal lobe and end in the nuclei pontus. The substantia nigra, intercalatum, is a layer of gray substance containing numerous deeply pigmented multipolar nerve cells. It is semilunar on transverse section, its concavity being directed towards tegmentum. From its convexity, prolongations extend between the fibers of the base of the peduncle. Thicker medially than laterally, it reaches from the ocular motor sulcus to the lateral sulcus and extends from the upper surface of the pons to the subthalamic region. Its medial part is traversed by the fibers of the oculomotor nerve as these stream forward to reach the ocular motor sulcus. The connections of the cells of the substantia nigra have not been definitely established. It receives collaterals from the medial lemniscus and the pyramidal bundles. Bechtero is of the opinion 
that the fibers from the motor area of the cerebral cortex form synapses with the cells whose axons pass to the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and serve for the coordination of the muscles of mastication. The tegmentum is continuous below with the reticular formation of the pons and, like it, consists of longitudinal and transverse fibers together with a considerable amount of gray substance. The principal gray masses of the tegmentum are the red nucleus and the interpeduncular ganglion. Of its fibers, the chief longitudinal tracts are the superior peduncle, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, and the lemniscus. Gray Substance The red nucleus is situated in the anterior part of the tegmentum and is continued upward into the posterior part of the subthalamic regions. In sections at the level of the superior colliculus, it appears as a circular mass which is traversed by the fibers of the ocular motor nerve. It receives many terminals and collaterals from the superior cerebellar peduncle, also collaterals from the ventral longitudinal bundle, from Gudin's bundle, and the median lemniscus. The axons of its larger cells cross the middle line and are continued downward into the lateral funiculus of the medulla spinalis as the rubrospinal tract those of its smaller cells, and mainly in the thalamus. The rubrospinal tract forms an important part of the pathway from the cerebellum to the lower motor centers. 